Hello, welcome to my 3D Amazon channel. In this video, we are going to learn five simple and easy tips that will make your modeling faster right today. Uh, let's get started. Tip number one, shortcuts. You wouldn't think that shortcut will help your workflow faster, but believe me, it will. Because each and every second you save in Maya, you're gonna come out at the end, and it's you're gonna be saving five to 10, uh, 10 minutes at the end of your uh, long hour session of modeling. So for example, if you want to uh, <clears throat> see a wireframe on shared on this cube, um, I have to go to shading and wireframe on shared. So this literally took me three to four seconds, but whereas now I have a, a shortcut key assigned to it, so I can literally toggle through it. So I'm literally saving three seconds. So um, if you work for long hours, you're gonna compounding at the end. For example, another example is, uh, if I want to extract this plane from my cube, I have to go to edit mesh and I have to say extract. So this took uh, the same amount of time but longer, but I have a shortcut key assigned to it, so I literally do it here, it took only a second. Um, the same thing, in order to change my center pivot exactly here, to make it, uh, make this pivot center to this plane, I have to go to modify center pivot. But whereas now I have a shortcut key, so I can literally do that. If you want to direct my history, the same thing, you have to go to the menu and do it. But whereas I have a shortcut key assigned to it, I can literally do it from here, you can see it. So I assigned like most like shortcut key for everything. So in order to assign shortcut keys, what you have to do is you have to go to uh, Windows, setting preferences and go to art key editor so you could go to many items and you can assign to any of the tool in this menu let's say if you go to modeling edit mesh you can literally add any shortcut key um, to this and you can see it save and you can also have custom scripts i also have custom scripts for my wireframe shared because um, maya doesn't have a wireframe shared uh, art, cut key, uh, art key for it so I'll see you in the next tip. Tip number two, marking menus. Marking menus are really powerful in Maya, which helps you to make your workflow faster. You could do any operation you can imagine in Maya, just in the perspective view. So if you hold on to space, you can see all the menu options, all the time, uh, all the sub uh, sub menu, uh, and the shelf options. Everything is visible here. Uh, you could also change the this marking menu to just to show just modeling only just by doing this if you go into the art box controls you can say rendering only so it's going to only show the rendering components of the menu you could change to modeling if you want by modeling only and i'm going to show everything so you could see all the option you could imagine in maya itself and there's also two types of marking menu one is by holding down by shift right click and one is holding down control shift and right click so I will show the difference in a second. So if you want to extrude this face from the uh, from from this cube, you have to go to Edit Mesh and Extrude. Um, using marking menus, you can do it right away. You can Shift right click and you say Extrude Face, and you could do it. So you could do it, you know, really fast as well. You don't you not to go there, and it also pop up the options here as well. Let's say um, if Shift right click, so it's going to show. Uh, all the possible operations you could do with uh, with a face. So it also works in edge mode and vertex mode. Let's say if I want to select this edge, shift right click and you could say bevel edge and it's gonna bevel it. Shift right click and bevel it. So it's really faster. So you need not to go here and do every operation. Um, so it's gonna save a lot of time and that will make your workflow faster as well. And there's other thing called, um, if you hold on here, let's say here um, if i hold on control shift right click it's going to give the uh, access uh, access menu for me so this is in the world mode if i want to change to like a component mode so now it's going to give my uh, give my access information right here i need not to go here and change my um, let's say if i want to change my <coughs> If I want to change it to world, I could change it just by holding on control, control shift and control shift right click and you can change it to any other axis you want. Um, <coughs> so let's jump to tip three. Tip number three, snapping tools. 
Snapping tools are nothing but, as the name says, it helps to snap between a geo. Um, I learned snapping tools in after six months in school because it helped my workflow faster and made my um, modeling cleaner too. Um, I'm going to show an example. If I want to snap this cube exactly right in near in this phase. Since my pivot is exactly the center pivot, uh, center uh, center of this cube, I can't snap exactly to this corner. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit inset. Inset, what it does, it helps you to change the pivot point wherever you want it. So if you say uh, snap it to points, it's going to snap it to a point right there. So I'm just you know, snapping to a point which is at the corner. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep it enabled. I'm just going to snap it on that point. So you could snap it to any other points in this cube. See, that's really accurate uh, way of snapping. So if I don't have snapping, I'm going to do this manually eyeballing it, but I'm not pretty sure it's exactly snapped to that cube. Um, the snapping works on all modes. Let's say if I want to snap this face to this face, I'm going to select the face, I'm going to select two points, and I'm going to select to this face. So don't confuse with points. Points works with vertices, faces, and edges. You can also snap it to grid by turning on to this. So it, it just snaps to the grid now. You can see literally it snapped to the grid. So I'm going to select the edge, I'm going to snap it to the grid. So it's literally snapping on the grids. And you can also snap on the curve too. You could take a geo and snap it to a curve and you could follow the curve. Um, so there is also a shortcut key to in order to move, you hold on V for the points, you just hit V once and it's going to give a point and you can point in the center. And if you want to, um, if you want to, uh, uh, on grid, you have to hit X. So that will change your, uh, grid uh, grid mode to X, that's a shortcut key. So V for vertices to the points and X for uh, X for the grids and C for um, snapping to the curve. So there's another tip I'm going to give you guys. So this will be really helpful. Let's say if I have this, right? So if I want to move this snapping just only along this line. So as soon as I change the axis, it's going to turn um, yellow. So the snapping only happens in that direction. So let's say if I want to snap something here, so it's going to snap from that point. Let's pick an edge and I'm going to snap it right there. So it's going to snap it on the grids as possible. You can like snap it, you could snap it here by holding onto it and it's going to snap it from that point. You could see it right there. Uh, so, the, so no, now you know which axis you're going to snap it. So there's a tip and I'll see you in the next tip. Tip number four, duplication. In Maya, there is something called duplicate special that will help you to, um, to create multiple copies of your uh, modeling details. Uh, for example, if I want a cube, if I want to, if I want, uh, if I want a sphere going around my cylinder every 30 degrees, in order to do that, I want my pivot to be here and freeze the transformations and control D to duplicate and hit minus 30 and minus 30 is minus 60. So this is a tedious process to do. I have to rotate and duplicate every 30 degree. So there is something called duplicate special in Maya, which will helps to make our real life easier. If you go to duplicate special, if you go to edit, duplicate special, reset the settings. So say a copy, uh, copy, uh, copy, geometry type copy and group under parent. So I'm going to say every 30 degree, I want to this sphere to be copied. So how do I know it's in Y? So if I rotate it, you could see Y. It's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to say 30, and I want, if you do Y360 by 30, it's 12. So I'm going to say 11 copies because we have one copy already. So I'm going to hit apply. So there you go, boom, we got it. So see, I need not, we need not to rotate 
the sphere manually instead we could use duplicate special duplicate special also works on um, all other modes like in scale transform um, you could imagine this will helps to uh, give uh, make your uh, copies really fast so let's say I'm gonna say uh, transform every 20 uh, 20 time and scaled in two so if I hit two you could see we get a wonky result because why what it is doing is it's keep on scaling on the axis we provided and it's moving based on the transformation values um, from the top it kind of looked cool but at the bottom you could see it's kind of messed up um, so choose your poison wisely so here <coughs> there is other concept called duplicate so duplication works in modeling too let's say i have this cube and i want to create another cube on top of this i could literally control d duplicate and move it around so now you can see i literally made duplicates of it let's say if i want to add some details here i'm going to say bevel so now i have something here and let's say if i want to uh, separate pieces extruded from this face um, we could use the same thing what i usually do is i do ctrl d and i isolate by shift i or clicking on this option click here and i'm going to delete all the faces i don't need so now what i'm going to do i'm going to delete this face and i'm going to extrude it out so now if i go back now you could see that face has been extruded um, from that point so now i'm going to combine this and I could have another duplicate and control D and duplicate something and make different shape from it. So this kind of looked like a sci-fi detail. So I could keep on doing this. I can combine this, scale it down, and I rotate it and I could say minus 90. So there you go so just by duplicating we created some kind of like a sci-fi structure which made our workflow faster as well uh, so that's it for duplication i will see you in the next step tip number five modeling toolkit um, the modeling toolkit has been introduced in 2015 as an update and it comes in 2016 and 17. so if you don't see it it's usually in between channel box and attribute editor in 2017 if you don't see it go to mesh tools I'm adding it now but if you go show modeling toolkit it's gonna pop up here so what modeling toolkit does um, modeling toolkit is nothing but it has all the modeling operation as possible in Maya you could imagine um, so it's usually uh, starts with the multi-component mode so the multi-component mode is a beautiful thing in, in um, uh, modeling toolkit because uh, it comes in edges vertices and face mode so you could select three modes in one component so you could also isolate as you want it and you could see all all of the possible uh, all of the possible modeling operations you could imagine here you can also change the axis setting here as well if you want and <clears throat> you could also change your camera based selection and symmetry and constraints and soft selection as well um, i'm not going to give a demo because we learned like all the modeling uh, tools before and it's literally right here and if you really like this tutorial please like subscribe and comment below and if you want to see more videos like this please let me know in the comments